You're listening to Shift, Human First Financial Guidance with Ross Marino. Today, we are joined once again by Jamie Hopkins. Hello, Jamie. Hey, Ross. How are you doing, my friend? I am great. So glad that you're here. I appreciate you being virtual. You're at a conference where I know you're working and you're speaking, but you're Jamie Hopkins, so you are ready to go wherever. So thanks for taking time for us today. Thanks. Yeah, a lot of people said that, you know, we haven't perfected cloning yet, but sometimes I feel like, you know, when I look out there in the world, I might have been able to do it because I'm often about at three places at once. And yeah, out at Riskalyze, fantastic group, right? AK, Aaron Klein's done a great job out here and just uh, really meaningful, you know, a lot of charitable work uh, pushed into the conference in a beautiful way. Uh, so that's been nice to see out here. Well, I think we find that some of the people that have created businesses and firms that really have impacted the industry, they're wired in a way where they just want to make impact. So it's usually going to go well beyond what they're doing as an organization. Yeah, and I think we're seeing more and more of that, Ross, too, is like, you know, conferences, events, companies, figuring out that impact that they want to have on the world. Um, you know, they've got a Ukraine fund uh, set up here as part of the conference. There's also Females in Finance here and Cheryl Hickerson and the pledge there to, I think, bring in what and train 100,000 women over the next five years into this industry. Like those are really meaningful impacts that are embedded into the whole culture here. Let's transition to what we're talking about today. You are in my opinion, one of the original shifters in our industry. And by that, I mean, you have been helping advisors to shift the conversation, but also shift their approach to financial mm -hmm. planning, to business, to practice management. You obviously have a great background on psychology and understanding how people think and how they feel. And you've been able to apply that through coaching, through the books that you write. And mm -hmm. you know, right now, I know you've got a new project going and a new book going. I, I'd love for you to start off by sharing what you're doing, what led to that book and what you're thinking about right now. Absolutely. And, you know, that whole shift mentality, you know, started when I was looking at the retirement income world and back to college and building our ICP and delivering that product out to the world. And then I wrote Rewirement, which was trying to change the way we think about income planning. And then, yeah, right now um, I've got this. So this is actually a, a, not a real book. It is a real book, but this is my prop book because it comes out on the 22nd, Find Your Freedom. And this is something we use a, a lot in the Carson conversation. And, you know, Ron, uh, you know, is really the one that kind of drove this original thought of like freedom and what it meant to him. And we did it during a retreat with like our leadership team. And it was amazing how everybody's definitely definition of freedom was different. And it totally shifted a lot of the, the relationships and the conversations. You got so much deeper than like, you know, when you start off the call, hey, Ross, how are you? Like, well, like, what does freedom mean to you? Oh, but that's a really interesting question. And I've started asking people all the time. And then I was like, you know, there's something here. And so we wrote this book and it really is about shifting that conversation for clients away from in the financial planning world, right? dollars and 401ks and strategies and taxes, which are all important, but it's not what people actually care about. Like nobody really cares about whether it's a Roth IRA or traditional IRA. They care about what those two things allow them to do and what it allows them to be in life. So this book is really all about going past goals, past the financial planning tactics to the aspirations of who we aspire to be. And I think even just this, this simple language change asking clients what freedom means to them and like, how close are they? And we talk about that in the book, like ranking it. And, you know, for somebody like me, and I'm pretty honest about this, even though I wrote a whole book on it, like I'm not close to my freedom. And what my freedom means to me is being able to design my day when I wake up. Well, a lot of days I wake up, I've got a six, four and three year old and I got 12 Zoom calls. I don't get to design my day. My design, right. you know, like my day is kind of designed for me. Now look, fair enough, I picked the life that I live today, but that's what freedom means to me. And so I'm pretty low on my freedom scale right now. But what I spend all my time thinking about is how do I get to freedom now, right? And so I can start doing that planning and you know, shift my life in a way where I, I find that uh, meaning and freedom on who I wanna be. And I think if we're speaking with clients, depending on what stage of life they're in, they're able to approach freedom and shifting differently. Uh, I had a conversation earlier this year with someone. I almost parroted exactly what you just said. It was with Brian Portnoy. And oh, okay. we were at a conference, <laughs> right? We were at our Retirement and Longevity Summit, and we were talking about freedom. And I said, I have a block in my history with kids, with special needs at home, caretaker, mm -hmm. and, and other responsibilities where 
it was not complaining, but there really wasn't space for freedom. It's like, this yeah. is my life. This is what I do. And th that, of course, changes. And then eventually you have it. But sometimes you have kids, you have responsibilities, you have work. The The amount of freedom you have is limited. Doesn't mean there's none, but it's yeah. limited. But as we age, and then, of course, as we go into retirement, hopefully now's this, this waterfall of freedom coming at you, which mm -hmm. I, I would imagine is pretty overwhelming for people. Yeah. And a lot of people haven't taken the time to like figure out where they're going to get meaning from and where that freedom actually comes from. Right. Like they know that things are going to change, but they don't take the time to go through that conversation. And it, it takes a lot of like looking back at who you are and those past experiences. And, you know, I, I remember at your conference too, um, you know, Brian and Joy, I, I talked to both of them about this conference there, right. Joy Larry's out there too. We had a really fantastic conversation that she ended up writing an article on that week after after our couch, she mentioned me and kind of the, the, the kickoff for the article was I also talk about like the last and there's there's a lot of lasts in your life that you don't know it's the last like the last summer that you're really off like you know just because you're in school and the last time you hang out with a certain friend and that's the one that I was kind of opining on right then in that moment for whatever reason I was thinking about you know like my childhood best friend like we had a last time that we hung out like I don't even remember what it was though but there was a last and there's those last moments and to kind of think back upon them and you know reflect a little bit um, and like what joy that they meant to you and you know some of them are hard and i think as you start to reflect on those things and you reflect with clients on those things you can start to define what freedom means and like this happiness factor uh and what to focus on in life so i'll, I'll share a very personal thing from yesterday and i've, I've been telling people at the conference because it's it's on my mind and i'm a little bit more rambly and space spacey right now because of it but my aunt passed away yesterday and you know it's kind of like my second mom it's my mom's best friend my my cousin david um you know, uh, you know, her, her son uh, is like my brother. And so that's like a 5 a.m. call that I woke up to out here yesterday. And, you know, I spent the last day and a half now, you know, it's a lot of reflection. It's a lot of grieving. It's kind of like, ah, I can't believe like I won't call her again. Right. And I can't believe that she's just gone and, you know, kind of woke up and that was it. And, but then you try to reflect back on all the really positive memories and like that experience. And then, you know, like I just called my sister yesterday, see how she was, but I made really sure that like, I ended the conversation with like, Katie, I just want to like, let you know, like, I love you. Right. Like, and that was important to say that. And like, sometimes we're just like, Hey, I'll see you later. And you run off and I got to go. The kids are crying, like whatever, but like trying to be a little bit more present in some of my relationships and even some of the people here, like giving them a hug. If they're a hugger, some people don't want to be touched and that's good too. You got to respect that. But like, you know, and saying that you really appreciate them and like, thank you if they gave you an opportunity before. And then one more, and I know I'm talking a lot here. Uh, we we're having a conversation uh, about somebody else who knew Ron Carson and they, and they were saying, you know, Ron gave me an opportunity one time. And then like years later, I went up to Ron and said, thank you for that. And they, he said, Ron got all teary eyed and said like, well, nobody ever stops and says, thank you. Um, and I was like, you know, it's a, it's an amazing, like, it's such a small thing, right. And just being present in the moment, changing the way you're thinking about stuff is, is huge. And it has a huge impact on others around us. And as you said, shifting the conversation. So I, we, we didn't know that we were going there today, but, uh, you know, I try to talk about things on my mind that are current and, uh, that is the most current thing on my mind, Ross. <laughs> Well, it's great advice for all of us and helping us to be grateful for where we're at. And and you're right. People um, may neglect to say thank you as much as they need to. And when you receive it, we we were just in Vegas at one of our conferences and an advisor grabbed me and gave me a, a very detailed and personal thank you that, you know, I, I get it here. It, it, it yeah. makes you tighten up and makes you choke up. And he didn't have to come up and tell me all that, but it, it's it's always great to hear that. Now, we know with clients, let's do something pragmatic here they may be hyper-focused on goals or the goal, you know, the mm -hmm. thing. They want to talk about what's top of mind to them. And yes, it is important, but we may be thinking as advisors, we need to shift the conversation to really find out what matters here. How about some ideas for the advisors listening on ways to shift that conversation and get to what really matters? 
Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you how I broke down the book too. So I, I took the book in two avenues and that's a really important part. So the whole actual first half of the book is that shifting of that conversation, that reality is your clients. And then nobody's probably ever had a client that came in and said, I really want you to help me find my freedom. Like, like they never said that they're like, I need to do a rollover. Like I need right. some life insurance. You know, it was like some very specific life moment that they were coming in for. There's some people that look for planning. And so the whole first part is like, you know, kind of reflecting back on life, our past experiences, taking account of those, doing some of the value-based work. So like, what are the values that are important to you? Which values do you want to pass on to your kids? And that's a huge one. So if you get been really good, like family planning, it's that value definition of like, what's important in your family? What do you want to pass on? Having the conversations with your kids and loved ones. And so we go through that process in the first half. We also go to this uh, conversation about aspirations and, and that's very different. And like, I, um, you know, there's uh, some people out there that do that well. I'd say a lot of people don't have that skill set in the advisor world. Like you just haven't seen it. Uh, the coaching world, a little bit better, right? Like peak coaches work on that. And so we go, we go through actually like the way that Carson coaching works on goal setting and defining the blueprinting process for who you want to be. Mm -hmm. And so that's in there things like uh, writing your, uh, you know, like kind of planning out your funeral, writing your obituary, that type of stuff, right? And, uh, you know, what is that, you know, and if someone's going to get up and give that, you know, a eulogy at your funeral and actually writing that down, and we give you tips for how to do that. And that's a tough thing. And then it's like, well, do they talk about you, how you want to be talked about? Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a quote from Daryl Green, who I got to interview too in here. And he's one of the NFL best players of all time. And uh, he told me this really fun story about like, he's known for being a super humble guy and, you know, kind of soft-spoken. And he was like, you know, when I pass away and leave this earth, like I want to be known as like Daryl Green, like father, like man of God, caring citizen. And oh, by the way, he played football, right? Like he didn't want to be known as like NFL hall of famer and like all the other stuff. He's like, I want to be known who I am. And then the stuff I did comes after that. And I think that's a really beautiful thing because then you ask people like, well, who are you? Like, what do you, you know, we always go to that stuff. It's like, oh, what do you do for work? Right. Like it's like one of the first questions we ask people and it's like, that's not who somebody is, right? Like Jamie, you know, does funny videos with slides and he builds products and companies, but like, you know, and it's funny, like what people most know me for is all the side stuff I do. Right. Like it's Jamie who speaks, talks about retirement, but like, if you actually ask me what I do, like, I think I've launched like six or seven different companies. I've built a bunch of products. I do research. I lead teams, right? Um, like, that's actually what I do. But I'm usually not known for that. It's, oh, he talks about retirement attacks and like, he's got a book. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's interesting. And I've, I've tried to put more of that into my life lately. And even just how I talk about myself and the things I care about. So that's the whole first half. Whole second half is financial planning. And the whole the idea there is what's that expectation a client should get once you've defined where you want to go? What does the planning process bring to that? So it's not an investment book. It's not a product book. It's financial planning for a life on purpose. And that's the whole second half of it. And I'd say it's a variation of you, if you kind of think about the traditional CFP or planning process, plus what we do at Carson, plus what Jamie Hopkins thinks. So it's a, you know, a butchered version of those three things all into one thing. Uh, but it's, you know, it's what I've used and what I, I try to teach a lot of the advisors that I work with or coach through Carson coaching or at Carson. Well, it sounds like the book is, if if I actually had your knowledge, experience, intelligence, and a little bit of time, shift human first financial guidance. Sounds like that's what the book is really all about. So I, I can't wait to read it. I, I know it's coming out uh, November, is it? November 22nd with Harriman House, which is a you know, great publisher for a lot of the financial world. They love us. And uh, so we, we bring them business and they've been happy about it. <laughs> but yeah, they've been a great publisher to work with. Uh, and you know, it's in all the normal places, the Amazon. To, uh, uh, so Target's like a new one for me. So it'll be in Target, right? Which is like, that's interesting. So like, I do want to like go into a Target and like see a physical cost. So I, I, I know it's not every location, right? But I got to figure out whatever Target is actually going to be in, and like go in and get one. Because like requirement was just like I self-published that one and um, both those versions of it you know, on Amazon, which felt cool at the time. But I do think like a hard copy book in an actual bookstore, like that's going to be a big moment for me in life. I'm going to tweet that out um, no whatever day and go drive 35 miles to find some target. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you can't find one, I'll check mine as well. 
uh, mm-hmm. by, by all means. Well, I will post as well on social media when it comes out. I, I think the future of financial planning is really recognizing the importance of and the ability to shift the conversation to things that matter. I appreciate your work, Jamie. Can't wait to see the book and hope to see you at Shift next year. Yep. Thank you very much, Ross. Appreciate you. Thank you for listening to Shift with Ross Marino. Please visit humanfirst.live to learn more. This show is for general information purposes only and is not intended to provide recommendations or advice. Speak with a legal, tax, or financial advisor before making any decisions. Past performance references are historical and do not guarantee future